Hey everyone, this is Haley from Cartubers, and today I have a little bit of a news video for you all. As all of you probably watching already know, we are currently on a hiatus from Season 3, and we patiently await Season 4, but in the meantime, we have been getting a lot of announcement for things coming out this year. Sadly, we don't have any actual news about Season 4 itself just yet, and it might not be coming out for a while. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't come out till next year or later. I have a reason for this, which I'll get into later. But since this is just a news video, I only have an outline and not full script, so please excuse me if I ramble or mumble a bit. So now, let's get into all the good details. First off, we are getting Funko Pops in February. February 16th to be exact. This includes Callum, Rilla, Ezra with Bait, and Zim. If you have been paying attention in any of my videos, you might have picked up that I'm a huge Soren fan, so this was very disappointing to see that my favorite character will not be in the first wave nor will his sister, or Viren, or Ervos, who are very important players in this story. But that being said, with Funko Pops, there's always a chance that we'll get more of them in a second wave, and so on. So make sure to buy these ones so we can get them and I can be a happy fan. Next up we have on March 3rd is Callum's Spellbook, which I know a lot of people are excited about. This is going to be 160 pages long, and um, on the Amazon page it is described as Based on the hit Netflix show from the head writer of Avatar The Last Airbender, this humorous in-world notebook has everything a fan needs to know about the magical world of the Dragon Prince. It all started when Callum and Ezra met a Moonshadow Elf and discovered the egg of the Dragon Prince. So much has happened since then. The trio is on a quest to return the Dragon Prince to its mother in Zadia, Viren seems to have ill plans, and oh yeah, Callum's learning magic. So that's really interesting that despite it being called Callum's Spellbook, a lot of this description just focuses on what happens in the actual show. I don't think that's going to be so much the case with the book. Um, I could see it, I guess I can see it going off the events in chronological order. We do see that sometimes and uh, I think the most important thing to note with this book is that it's very much a kid's book. However, the creators have reassured me that there will be a lot of new information in it. And uh, I did notice that it has the same author as the Rebel Princess Guide for Dreamworks she so that's probably close to what we should expect for this kind of book. That also reminds me probably of the Paladin's Handbook from Voltron where we would get um, kind of like each of the characters putting down notes about, you know, getting little glimpses into their personality and their thoughts behind things, which is really cute, but we never really learn a lot in these books. I think this Dragon Prince book will be the exception because I heard from people that the uh, she book wasn't too informative or we didn't learn too much stuff, so that kind of does suck, but I don't think that'll be exactly the case with Callum's spell book because in fact we'll probably get, you know, really nice cool drawings uh, from Callum about his friends and, you know, we'll get new spells probably and uh, there's apparently original concept art and we have a few bits of information about what to expect in the book. As for new lore, we are going to learn the name of a new arch dragon. maybe we'll get to see them. It might be Rex Ignis, if I'm saying that correctly, which would be uh, Earth Primal Dragon as far as I could tell. And we will be learning stuff about Tidebound Elves, which we just learned the name of in a recent AMA. So that's really cool. Uh, I hope to learn about spells from all the different Arcanums, because Callum should definitely learn all of them. Just saying. <laughs> Next up, we have Book One Moon, which is a novel of the first season. It's coming out on June 2nd, and it's going to be 256 pages long. And here's the description on Amazon. With the world on the brink of war, Three young heroes from opposite sides of the conflict embark on a dangerous quest that could change everything. This beautiful book expands on the events of Season 1 of the hit Netflix show, The Dragon Prince. So, uh, as you can probably tell, it's going to be somewhat of a novelization of the first season of the show. Uh, there's going to be a few new things I've heard. Most notably, for me at least, is that the creators confirmed in an interview with me that we'll be learning stuff about Soren and Claudia's mom. Uh, and about their situation and how things came to be as we saw them in season one. So that's going to be great as I am a big Sorn and Claudia fan. And apparently we'll also learn more about Judgment Under the Half Moon. It will be expanded on and hopefully we get to learn about other types of elves and why the Tidebound and Earthblood elves were not there during that big event. Because that was a really important event, so where the heck were they? Other new tidbits I'm hoping to get are the names of the other Moonshadow Assassins, maybe some names of towns and villages, and names of characters we really never got names for, like the Mercenary. And this overall will just be a deeper experience of Season 1, which is going to be pretty good, I think. I think it'll be a good time to really read about little details of things that we really didn't get to learn much about in the actual show, with only 9 episodes. So with a 256-page book, you know, we can expect quite a bit. 
Then next up is The Art of the Dragon Prince, which releases on July 7th. As you could probably tell, this is an art book, and here's the description. The Dragon Prince has enchanted and enthralled viewers since its initial release in September of 2018. Now for the first time ever, dive into the world behind its creation with its all-new hardcover collection. Never foreseen concept sketches, preliminary designs, and first impressions from the first three seasons of the anime and Netflix series expand over nearly 200 pages of content, from storyboards and environments to the characters and creatures that fans across the world have come to love. As is the case with a lot of art books, we can expect some commentary from the creators and people that worked on the show to get little new tidbits about behind the scenes information that we never heard from before, so I'm really looking forward to this. And maybe, maybe, we'll get new information about, you know, elf types or characters. Um, I wouldn't expect way too much uh, in new canon lore material since this is just an art book, but I mean, getting names of previously unnamed creatures or elves, uh, you know, would be awesome if we don't get that in the season 1 novelization. And finally, for the books, we have the just-announced graphic novel, Through the Moon. This will be releasing on September 15th and will be 128 pages long. Here's the description. Don't miss the exclusive, original story set between seasons 3 and 4 of the hit animated series, The Dragon Prince. The Dragon Prince has been reunited with his mother, the human kingdoms and Zadia are at peace, and humans and elves alike are ready to move on. Only Rayla is still restless, unable to believe that Lord Viren is truly dead, and haunted by questions about the fate of her parents and Runan. She remains trapped between hope and fear. When an ancient ritual calls to her, Callum and Ezrin, to the Moon Nexus, she learns the lake is a portal to a world between life and death. Rayla sees his opportunity for closure, and the chance to confirm that Lord Viren is gone for good. But the portal is unstable, and the ancient Moonshadow elves who destroyed it never intended it for to be reopened. Will Rayla's quest to uncover the secrets of the dead put her living friends in mortal danger? Well, I guess we'll see. And I am super excited for this, obviously, because this is brand new content that we are getting that is, you know, most likely 100%, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure about this, definitely canon between seasons 3 and 4. So it'll be great to see these characters again and, you know, get to see them, even if not in totally animated form, seeing them like this in one way or another is great. And I love graphic novels in the first place. So this is really cool. And not to mention, this is a Rayla-centric graphic novel. So that was surprising to me. But, um, you know, it seems like it's going to be a lot of focus on her. And that's pretty cool because we have always known Rayla to be the more cautious and distrusting one. Uh, a lot of the other characters, you know, will trust a lot more easily than her. And this seems to be another instance of that. The show has mentioned the world between life and death before, so this is really cool that they're bringing this back, and it's in fact the Moon Nexus that is the portal. So that's really cool, but then again, this is pretty scary, you know? This place is never meant to be reopened, and Rayla is going to be messing with that, and that is bad. Although I am wondering what kind of ramifications this will have on the fourth season once that eventually comes out. Since we as the viewers already know that Viren was revived by Claudia, what difference will this make in the overall scheme of things. I think it's possible that maybe Rayla will not learn the truth after all, and so there might just be a little bit of conflict looming in season 4 that people that did not read the graphic novel might not totally get, but uh, it won't be that important of the events of the graphic novel on the overall story. Then again, maybe she will, and people that have not seen this graphic novel might be a little confused, so we'll have to see where it goes. But I'm super excited for this, and I'm wondering if there will be a time jump before or after the graphic novel takes place, uh, since, you know, I really want that time jump, just saying. And I'm also hoping, since this mentions Rayla's parents, and Runan, if we'll get to see Athari again, if he'll be a big player in this. Um, you know, how far will Rayla go to get answers? Will she, you know, just, this is just, I just feel so worried for her because we also got a little piece of key art that was posted on Twitter not too long ago, and it shows Rayla in a pool of water, a body of water, almost drowning looking like, or she's just kind of sitting there, or not, just she's just in the water, and hands are reaching out to her. So was that referencing this graphic novel? Like, maybe this was a little concept part for that? Or has this had nothing to do with it? Or are people just overthinking this? But I mean, having a body of water, the lake, and then of course this key art so close together, uh, that's really interesting to note. But for all of you wanting to get season 4 as soon as possible, please note that the graphic novel will not be coming out until September, so the chance of season 4 happening this year is very slim. Having the story that continues the main story will probably mean a big break between any new content of this scale. Not to mention that last we heard, season 4 was not even greenlit, so that does suck, and it might be a bit of a waiting game, but you know, always hope. 
And so finally, I want to briefly mention the video game, and we don't really know when this is coming out at all, or we really don't have the information yet, but I'm really hoping that we learn some stuff about it this year, and if not, then hopefully it will come out in 2021, and maybe Season 4 will too, so that'll be a great year. Uh, but, you know, the video game is going to be great, I'm just sure about that, and I can't wait to talk about that a lot more once we get more information. So that was basically it for all the new content we are going to be getting this year, and hopefully in the years to come we'll get more cool books and such, and hopefully new merchandise, I'm always here for more merchandise. So, um, yeah, that was basically it, and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and we'll be covering all new Dragon Prince content as it comes out. And, you know, we'll most likely be getting books in early to review and such, so turn on notifications to be one of the first to watch. Thank you all for watching, and have an animated day!